it's the 27th of December and uh, I've taken the uh, decision to take down the 50 foot, that's the 15 meter long doublet. I've put up a slightly longer version, 94 feet, that's about 28, 29 meters long. So I'm just going to do that now and uh, prepare that antenna. And I'd uh, like to show you what I've done and hopefully the thing will work well on 80 and 60. Let's have a look. Hi there, it's Tim, G5TM from Deepest, Darkest, West Sussex. Welcome again. If you're new to the channel, it's great to have you on board. And if you're a returning uh, viewer and a long-time subscriber, or even a recent subscriber, great to have you with me. Thank you. So you might be aware from the previous video, I'll put the link up there, that I was thinking about putting up a fan doublet, uh, maybe a 94 foot and a uh, 26 foot leg. From all the comments I got back, and thank you for those you've contributed to the discussion on that, and from all the stuff I've read about it, I've decided to go against the fan doublet option. Uh, it's very difficult, I think, to tell, uh, certainly on the higher bands, uh, which wire really is doing some of the radiating. Uh, probably, I'll probably have a couple of dips to play with, but I don't know whether that dip applies to the 94 foot wire or the 26 foot wire. So I've decided to abandon that experiment and just go with one 94 foot uh, doublet. So, how did it go? Well, let's take a look. So I've just gone and cut uh, just over 47 feet of this twin wire. I put the tape on the end just to double check the length that I cut until I remeasured it. Um, just see there maybe, can you see there? Yeah, maybe you can, maybe it'll focus. I've uh, got the two, your old twin core electric wires, got the uh, brown and the blue wire in there. Just gonna strip this back now, take the two wires out. So I know now these wires are identical lengths, which is why I use this stuff. Your safety knife. Now I'm just gonna make an incision on this. Doesn't have to be very long, only about an inch or two. And literally just peel it back, and then the wires will come out that way. As you can see, I'm doing that on top of this worktop here. I've got some protection on the worktop. I use excellent protection. In fact, I use the latest Practical Wireless magazine, which of course is out for sale at any good news agents or other ones. There you go. And unlike some channels, you see, I uh, don't like to damage worktops or anything like that. I think that's a terrible thing to do. And uh, the channels that do that, you know exactly who you are. You know who you are who damage your kitchen worktops and things in the name of amateur radio. You don't do things like that. You've got to take these precautions. So, two identical wires. In this case, one brown, one blue, your twin core. And by the way, I picked this up at a boot sale for about uh, three pounds. So that was quite nice. About a huge reel of it, so that was a good result, that. Anyway, got my wife to help me with this because uh, it was getting all twisted. And she, thought, she came in because she put, she put stuff, because the tumble dryer is underneath here, you see. She came in to put stuff in the tumble dryer and she thought, uh, oh, come on, let me help you with that. So she, she, uh, she basically uh, pulled one end and I was pulling the other end just to, sort of un, un, you know, to strip it from the, uh, from the outdoor installations. So that was a bit of fun. Anyway, thank you very much, Karen, for doing that. So there you go. Right, so one brown, one blue. Next step now then is to, uh, yeah, fit some uh, insulators on them. And I do have a couple here. Hang on. So these are old soda bean insulators I've had for a while. And these will hold very well. Okay. Wire in that end, insulation and the, uh, the paracord I've got will go in the other. And I bought some paracord off Amazon. A uh, nice big fat reel of that. Nice black allegedly military paracord, but uh, who knows? So uh, that's the story. So here she is, the right hand leg going down to that pole, down vertically a little while, then going across there. And uh, I'll point out where the insulator is there for you. Then the left hand leg, again coming down, inverted V, down about a foot and then going back across the plane of the antenna a little bit. Not ideal, but uh, there you go. And the ladder line comes down the fiberglass pole, non-conductive of course, and just along the guttering there, into the shack. Okay then, so it's uh, it's the evening, and uh, I've got a chance to put the antenna up. So you've seen me having a little uh, dabble playing around here and putting it together, and uh, put it up outside. 
So how did it perform? Was it a success? Well, how do we define the word success? Uh, if we mean an antenna is successful because it tunes nearly every band you want, being a doublet, of course, you need a tuner. So does it tune every band you want and does it get you contact? Yes. Is it a success? I would say no. And the reason being is, apart from the fact it won't tune 60, bizarrely, and 17 metres, and by the way, I have altered the length of the ladder line a bit to try and uh, add bits on to try and bring those bands in, but it hasn't happened. The reason that it's not a success in my eyes is because I'm getting some nice big fat RF in the shack. Uh, how do I know this? Well, when I was tuning her up on 80 meters, um, I've got some external speakers plugged into the, um, well, you know, plugged into the rig, and you can hear the nice hum. As I went from five watts, where I had nothing, and as I increased the power, got past 50 watts, and suddenly, hum, I got louder and louder, and I thought, okay, that's not good. Um, then I noticed that my N1MM um, program crashed. So obviously RF has been picked up by the uh, the lead, the USB, micro USB lead between the rig and the, the PC or the laptop. And that was on 80 meters. And of course, how else did I know I had RF in the shack? I had a nice little RF burn. Hey, so that's my first ever one. If I've had two tonight, because it didn't just happen on 80, it happened on 40. Once I got to about 70 watts, just tuning the power up. As I was tuning it to make sure, you know, just getting the right sort of uh, tune on on the using the tuner there, and I just happened to touch the VFO and zzz, um, like a warm little little uh, pinprick on my finger, and I knew straight away it was that. And in fact, it happened on forty as well. So, why has that happened? I think what uh, the reason is is because I'm sitting the shack is positioned as you could probably tell by the. By the uh, by, the outside sort of pictures, the outside footage, the shack is directly under, or not right directly under, but is positioned under one of the legs, the right hand leg. As you look at the um, as as you look at the antenna from the house. Now, when I had the fifteen meter, that's the forty foot doublet, uh, fifty foot doublet up. Um, same position, obviously, the shack's in the same position. Uh, inverted V, over, one leg over the shack, not a problem. I think uh, there's two reasons for this. Possibly three reasons, all to do with the position of the antenna. That leg going over the shack now uh, comes down vertically on the pole, which is right outside where the, the shack is positioned and where the feed line enters the shack as well, because the feed line has to come down and then move over the sort of the roof, not a move over the roof, but move around the outside of the of the shack and then down. It goes like that. And of course that leg is coming down there. So it's coming down the pole. It's actually about eight or nine, maybe eight feet no more, uh, before it goes off that way. So at that point there, when it goes down to the lowest bit before it tapers off down that fence or above that fence, it's about eight feet, two, three meters, say three meters from the ladder line. I'm pretty sure that's radiating stuff into the ladder line. Um, 80 meters is obviously a, a lower band, um, longer wavelength. So I'm much more within the far field, within the immediate sort of far field, within the immediate scope of, of any strong lobes that are going to hit me as well, which I, suggest, I probably suppose there are some. Um, also, the other reason, and by the way, the RF in the shack has occurred no matter what length of ladder line I use. I added 8, 10, 15 foot on, it doesn't make any difference. Um, the other thing is as well, obviously that left hand leg, the other leg, is as you can see coming so directly across. So it's not ideal, but clearly there could also be a strong load coming off the side of that, beaming straight into the shack. So... Um, it's not affecting anything else. I mean, I was half afraid it would trip the RC, little RCD box, which is down there, but it hasn't. Um, it's not um, knocked out the piece, the laptop at all, apart from the uh, the connection with N1MM. It hasn't killed the internet router, the mesh, which is right by the ladder line. Not killed that at all. So I just think, personally, that the... Because 40 metres surprised me, you see, because I didn't have any problems at all on 40 whatsoever on 100 watts with that 50-foot 
15 meter long dub doublet. So I just think the wire is just too close to the ladder line on one leg. And I can remedy that by just taking it straight off the top of the pole and just running it down rather than running it down. Because I tried to save on space, you see. I was being a bit, trying to be a bit too clever by running a bit of it vertically down before it went off, but I'll just run it down. So that might, if that is, the, if that is a cause, it might stop that from happening. The other leg, uh, well, yeah, I can go back to the old way to do it. And I'll put a link up there for the old way I did the 80 meter doublet, where I literally just went down and around a shed and back. So it literally, it was, it was kind of over that side a lot more. So I'll try that. I'll, I might try, I might just go with, first of all, that leg, put it up higher, run it down, see what happens. Uh, I'll try the other leg if that doesn't work. If that doesn't work, then clearly, um, from the wire above, there's clearly a, we're clearly far too close to it. For 40 meters, sorry, that was my, that was my Glade Fresh going off there. Um, but that's just too close to me, I think. Uh, certainly for 80 meters. The 40 meter um, RF issue surprised me a bit. But there you go, uh, with the 50 meter, 50 foot, 15 meter doublet, um, it's much higher. I say much higher, it's probably about seven or eight foot, feet higher, but of course that might make a difference. So I'm gonna try anyway and see what happens. If it all doesn't work, then I need to think of a plan B. Now this is what my plan B is going to be. Plan B, if this doesn't work, so I'm gonna try and get 80 meters, so, I'm going to probably install an N-fed half wave. Now that won't be going over the shack at all. That would be starting off on the far left, as you see it, and taking the same uh, um, sort of route as the wire that's coming across. So it'll go up as an inverted L, probably about 20, 25 feet, and just gradually taper down to about a 12 foot pole, four, four meter high pole. So it goes up about seven meters, down to four meters, and then it'll, that'll just about handle the full 66 foot of the 40 meter element. But of course, what I'll do then is run a shortened version for 80 meters. So you'll have uh, a, a coil and then about two, two and a half meters of wire after that. So I can cope and I can fit that in. It'll be narrower bandwidth, it'll be a compromise, but it'll still get me on 80 meters. It might be a bit, a little bit noisier than the center fed antenna, but we'll see. And my friend Tom, G2NV, uh, is in the process of putting together a nice big fat coil for me for that, so thanks Tom. And what Tom is also doing for me, <laughs> which is really good of him, is that I'm gonna try and also try, just so I can do it, a 40-80 trap dipole. So it'll be a short version for 80 meters. So it'll be a full fat 66 foot dipole for 40 meters, again with two, two traps, and then with about don't know how long, actually two, three meters of wire after after the traps. It'll be about um, 70 to 80 foot long. What's that gonna be? Uh, 23, 22, 23 meters, something like that. So again, appreciably shorter than 80 meter dipole. Again, that'll have narrower bandwidth. But hey, I'm only interested in operating from around 3.7 to 3.78. So I don't need that much bandwidth anyway, and I can easily ask the tuner within the 7300 to swallow up any huge mismatch that might be there. So a couple of plans, a good chance to experiment, because if, if the NFED half wave works out, uh, I've then got that big center pole to play with. And what I was thinking about doing with that one was doing maybe a vertical doublet for the higher bands and running a bit of lad line towards the shack. So it'd be like a vertical doublet fed in the center with the lad line coming directly to the shack here. So that might be an option as well, maybe for the higher bands, uh, especially I'm thinking for uh, 10, 12, 15, 17. So that's something to look at as well. And don't forget that N fed half wave I was thinking about will give me 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10, you see, with fed with a 49 to one. So again, the good old versatile N fed half wave. I'm only running 100 watts. It'll be absolutely peachy. And I ran an NFED half wave last year with the, the, with, on 40 meters. And in fact, I did a monoband version and a 49 to one version. I'll put a link up there again for you because they are fantastic antennas. They really are. Anyway, that's plan B, plan C. There'll probably be a plan D. Goodness knows what. But I thought I'd let you know how it went. A qualified success, really. Probably in the long term, not a great install. But I'm going to try those, uh, those uh, tweaks and see if it works anyway. So who knows? If you've got any, uh, anything you'd like to add to the uh, situation, anything you'd like to uh, give me in terms of advice or comments, then please leave those uh, below. I'll be happy to hear that from you. 
Either way, thanks for watching yet again. It's Tim G5TM wishing you 73. Uh, we're coming up to the very end of 2020. So happy new year to you. Good luck for 2021. We'll catch you again now and uh, take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.